Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance and skate dress of your dreams. In today's video, we're tackling the subject, are you a starter or a finisher, and how that pertains to your sewing projects as well as your performance routines. Now, a classic starter tends to have great ideas. They're easily inspired about a project and they'll start quite often many of them at a time. And then as the project fades, their interest fades as well so that it becomes difficult, if not impossible, to actually finish it without help. A classic finisher is just the opposite, of course. They have a really difficult time starting a project. They tend to be naysayers. They're like, oh, that'll never work. We can't do this, we can't do that because they don't want to start a project. That is it's something that is so difficult for them. Once they are in the middle of the project or let's say they're at work, they're brought into the project midstream, they're fantastic. They can knock out that to-do list be highly efficient, get a lot done, bam, wrap everything up, the project is a success. I'll give you three examples of how this pertains to your sewing, your real life, as well as your performance routines. Now, I have been making dance and skate dresses for somewhere around 25 or 30 years. Probably 99% of the time I hated, absolutely hated, the last two or three hours of hand sewing and never pretty much never liked rhinestoning because it was finishing and every dress I would get so excited about the design inspiration I love choosing colors and sketches doing the fitting problem solving making it all work like it was supposed to I'd be going along great 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 because I'm an excellent starter with strong follow-through skills and then I would hit a wall <laughs> Literally, you know, like in the Forrest Gump movie where he runs and he runs for three years and then just suddenly he stops and he says, I'm tired now, I'm going home. <laughs> That's me. A, a real life example of the same thing. My former husband and I had a really great routine of, with laundry. I would wash it, get everything, you know, hand washed, whatever, sorted out, what needed to be dried went into the dryer. When the dryer was finished, he would pull it out of the dryer and happily sit there and fold clothes while he watched television. And then I would be horrified when I would go into the bedroom and see this nice, tidy pile of clean clothes waiting for me to put them in the drawer or to hang them up. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. Those clothes would sit there for days because I literally could not put them away. I would end up wearing half of the clothes before I finally went, oh, fine, just put it away. And I would have to force myself. So about a year ago, I was having a coaching call with a lady in England, and she was helping me just sort of work through some issues with Sew Like a Pro, with the sewing school. How could I be more efficient? So as I was telling her about the business, she goes, oh, you're a starter, not a finisher. You have got to get out of there hire someone to do the last 25% of these projects so that you can move on. She says, because you are killing yourself here. You are at an absolute dead standstill because you keep going over the same thing again and again and again. One, trying to make it more perfect, but two, because I'm stalling finishing. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this was not an aha moment. It was an ah ah, <sighs> moment, because I got it. As soon as she told me that, I had never heard this concept before, as soon as she told me that, it explained so much about my tendencies and immediately clarified my strengths and my weaknesses. It was so relieving. Even now, when I think about the relief when I first heard that of what a difference it made in how I view myself, how I view my progress. So the trick for you is to figure out what is your strength? Are you a starter or are you a finisher? Now you're going, well, okay, great. I get that. How does that pertain to my performance routines? Mm -hmm. So those of you who are starters, 
with, when you're learning a new routine, get really excited about choosing music and you can think about what outfit you're going to wear with it and you're so excited about, oh, I can use this step and this step and whether you're choreographing it as the coach or you're the student learning the routine, you get really inspired about it, it sounds fantastic. You learn the routine really quickly because you like inputting new information into your brain. About halfway through that routine, your interest starts waning and it gets more and more difficult. You don't want to practice. You don't, you're no longer inspired to practice. You don't want to have to try to work on the details. And when it comes time for the actual competition, pfft, whatever, <laughs> you're like, oh, then you tried because you don't want to finish. You can't finish. You're like, oh, this is never gonna work. This routine sucks. My dress isn't ready. You know, my hair's the wrong color. No, 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 we can't do this performance. Right? Does that sound familiar for a lot of you? Conversely, if you are a finisher, you dread starting a new routine. When you're, you know, when it's time for your coach says, okay, well, we're gonna learn a new routine. Now you're like, oh, and it's like nails on a chalkboard. And it takes a lot of times with finishers, it takes them a very long time to learn the routine and the teacher gets frustrated, and if you're the student learning the routine, then you're going, well, I'm so stupid, I, why can't I shove this stuff in my head? It's not that you're stupid. It's not that you can't do it. You're a finisher. Because if you'll notice, once you finally have given in and learned the routine, you get really inspired about the project then, because then you can start working on technique, and frame, and head position, and arm styling, and floor craft, and and then by the time performance comes, you're ready to go because you're rocking and you are finishing that routine. Yeah, doesn't that make so much sense? It works the same for your sewing projects in real life and for your performance routines. So I challenge you, make a list, three items, if all three items pertain to you for your routines, for your sewing projects as well as for real life. If only one or two of those pertains to you as watching this blog, totally fine. Do the ones that pertain to you. Maybe it's work. Maybe you need to do it for work or if you have house projects or landscaping projects that you have going. Make a list. What are you really excited about? And you can tell because you're, you tend to speak faster when you're excited. Your volume goes up a little bit more. And then when you really don't want to do something, you get slower and you don't make eye contact because you're dreading it. So what, so even if you can't logically narrow down what you like and don't like, pay attention to your body language or to your coworkers' body language or to your children's language and just start noticing what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Are you a starter or are you a finisher? And how are you in the follow through stage? And then once you've done that, try to bring on someone to balance you. Best thing I ever did, hired a wonderful country western dancer named Rhonda Schatz. She was my perfect counterpart because I'm a starter, she was a finisher. It worked brilliantly for many years. And I would start, do the fitting, hand it to her to do the sewing. She would give it back to me. I would tweak, do design lines, give it back to her. She would finish it humming and, you know, she'd sit at the sewing machine just humming away. And I was just cringing, thinking about doing what she was enjoying. So, save yourself some stress. Save yourself some internal negativity and do two things. Figure out your strengths. Acknowledge them and say, okay, it is what it is. And if you can bring on help, be it for work or, you know, get a spouse or a child or, you know, a, anybody to help you, great. And if you can't say, all right, well, this is, this is the way it is and this is what I'm good at. This is where I can improve a little bit. And I think you'll find that it makes all the difference in the world for you. So if you have found value in this, please, Tell all your dancing, skating, sewing friends, don't stress alone. <laughs> don't stress at all. <laughs> Figure out if you're a starter or a finisher. Leave me a comment below, please. Tell me, are you a starter or a finisher? How long have you known this? What aha 
did you take away from today's video? If you're watching this on YouTube and you have not already done so, please go to sewlikeapro.com, leave me your name and email address, and I'll make sure that you receive one of these dancing, skating, sewing tips. That's all for me today. I will talk to you again soon. Thank you so much.